Jessica too and a very a good day to all of you. I hope that all of you in a good condition. So for today, I'm going to share with you an example for simply supported flange beam design. So which is reinforced concrete beam. So given here, okay, is the simply supported flange beam. How uh, do we know this beam is a flange beam? Because this beam is connected to this slab. Here is the slab, here is the beam. Therefore, the beam is called as a simply supported flange beam. This is simply supported because of each of the beam is only one span. Here, one AB, here B, one, two, and so on. So here is the data given in order for us to design the flange beam. So given here is the slab thickness is 110 millimeter. The beam size is 175 millimeter times 450 millimeter. So in the next uh, tutorial, so I will show you how we determine the initial size of this beam. So actually, there is a method that we can uh, assume or we can calculate the initial size of the beam then the finishes here is 0 0.25 kilonewton per meter squared variable action 2.5 kilonewton per meter squared on the slab the brick wall is 26 kilonewton per meter squared at 0 0.115 millimeter thickness uh, and 2.5 meter height and then the shielding and surfaces is 0 0.25 kN per meter squared. The diameter bar given here is 12 mm. It is the initial assumption. The diameter link is 8 mm. Structural class S4, fire resistant one hour. The characteristic strength of concrete is 30 newton per millimeter square. The characteristic strength of steel reinforcement is 500 newton per millimeter square. And the nominal cover here is already given, which is 35 millimeter. The process to calculate the nominal cover is same what ha I have thought in the previous lecture. So in my case here, I'm going to design beam B12, which is this beam, B12, the length is four meter. So what are the first process that we have to do? Actually, we have to calculate the dominal cover, but in this case, the dominal cover is already given, 35 mm, no need for us to calculate the nominal cover. Then we start on the design action. So what we have to do on the design action, the first process we have to calculate the load on beam because we have to transfer the load from slab to the beam. This is the process that we have to know. In order for us to transfer load from slab to the beam, we have to determine the slab condition. Either it is a one-way slab or two-way slab, which is we have to determine Ly over Lx ratio. In our case here, Ly over Lx is equal to 1.45, which is less than two. Therefore, the slab is considered as a two-way slab. Then we calculate the permanent action and also variable action of the slab. So the slab sulfate is 25 times 0 0.11. The finishes is 0 0.25. Chilling and services is considered as a permanent action because it's fixed on top of, uh, below of your uh, slab. Okay, then the total GK is 3.25 kN per meter square. Then the total of the variable action here is given 2.5 kN per meter square. Uh, furthermore, I would like to share with you guys how to determine the variable action. Normally, the variable action can be referred to Euro code 1, which is for specific for the loading. It depends on the category of the building or structure that we are going to design. For example, category A is the uh, area that occupied with the residential, then they have a different uh, variable action depend on the location or, or the floor usage. For example, it is a floor, bathroom, bathroom, and also toilet, balcony. And then from that, we refer to the table and then we can get the total QK. So you can get this uh, value from the references. So then we factorize the load or action n equal to 1.35 GK plus 1.5 QK, which is 8.14 kN per meter square. As we know, when we would like to determine a load on top of the slab, normally we will consider one meter width. That's why the load here is 8.14 kN per meter. Sorry for the uh, unit is wrong. So it's supposed to be 8.14 kN per meter. This is the process that we have to uh, 
calculate how to transfer load from slab to the beam B12. So we know that the slab here is a one -way, uh, two way slab. So we divided the area okay, like this. So this is a triangular shape. This is a, a trapezoidal shape. So because of the stress, okay, the stress from this load transfer to this beam that we are going to design in trapezoidal shape. That's why the formula in order for us to transfer the load here is an LX over 6 times 3 minus LX over LY squared kilonewton per meter. Then we get the answer here, 9.43 kilonewton per meter. Then we will get the load transfer from slab to the beam. Next process, we have to calculate DW here. The W is the uniformly distributed load on top of your beam that you're going to design. So here, the beam permanent action is equal to 25 times 0 0.175 times 0 0.45, which is 1.97 kN per meter. And then on top of that uh, beam, there is a brick wall with 2.5 meter height then the permanent action is 7.48 kN per meter. Then we factorize with 1.35 GK. Why I didn't add up with 1.5 QK? Because we know that the variable action is acting on top of the slab. There is no uh, variable action on top of your beam. Okay, so you have to understand this situation. That's why we transfer the variable action from the slab to the beam. That's why we only calculate 1.35 GK here. Then we total up the load on the beam that we transfer from the slab here, and then we add up with W, which is a load or uniformly distributed load of the beam, which and then the total is 19.53 kilonewton per meter. As usual, after we determine the load on top of the beam, we have to calculate the bending moment and also shear force. So here is the process how we going to determine the shear force and also bending moment. So we draw the free body diagram of the beam here, that uh, which is a 4 meter beam 1, 2 with 19.53 kN load, which is the total load that we transfer from slab and also additional load from beam. Then we calculate the shear force WL over 2, we get the shear force here 39.06. Then the maximum bending moment is equal to WL squared over 8, or we can use the method that I already shared with you previously, which is the area of this shear force, which is triangular load here, uh, triangular shear force here. So it's equal to half time with 2 meter time with the height 39.06. So we will get the same answer here. Okay, after we get the shear force and also bending moment, the next process we have to the design main reinforcement. In order for us to design a main reinforcement for flange beam, it is a bit different from rectangular beam. So in a flange beam, there is a flange section here. So in our case here, okay, this flange section is L-shaped flange, flange section because it is a simply supported uh, beam. Okay, so that's why it is a flange section. If it connected, okay, to two slab, for example, at the middle span of the beam or at the middle section of the beam is normally a T beam. So in my case here, uh, the flange is a L flange. That's why. So the shape is like this. So in order for you to analyze the effective width of flange BEFF, the, here is the formula. So BEFF is actually, okay, the BW here is your BW, okay, plus with BEFF1. This is the length of BEFF1. So the BEFF1 is equal to 0.2 B1 plus 0.1 L0 less than 0.2 L0. So the L0 value is actually the length of the beam. The length of the beam here is 4 meter. Okay, so you have to know the length of the beam here is a 4 meter. So B1 is equal to... 2750. So 2750 is actually this length. Okay, I refer back to the diagram. Okay, this length. Okay, 2750. Okay, so because this is the section that we cut. Okay, and then 
the BEFF, okay, is using this formula. That's why the B1 is equal to 2750 minus BW over 2, and then we get the B1 value. Therefore, BEFF1 is equal to 0 0.2 time with B1 plus 0 0.1 time with L0 less than 0 0.2 L0. Therefore, BEFF1 is equal to 657.5, which is less than your 0 0.2 L0. So the BEFF, as I said before, BFF is equal to BEFF1 plus BW and should be less than B. The answer is 832.5 millimeter. So the effective depth, okay, uh, after we determine the effective width of the flange BFF, we have to calculate the effective depth, which is the D here, okay, which is equal to H minus C nominal minus diameter link minus diameter bar over 2, then the answer is 401. Okay, here is the difference between rectangular beam and also flange beam. We have to check the moment at flange, okay. So the moment at flange will determine the process that we have to use or the formula that we have to use or the method that we have to adopt in this design. Either we have to use a rectangular method or flange method. So we have to check the maximum moment is less than MF or more than MF. If we get the answer, the maximum moment is less than MF. Therefore, we have to design the section using a rectangular section so here is the formula you can refer to the design appendix so the design reinforcement here because we get the conclusion here m less than mf we are using rectangular method therefore m over fck bd square the difference is only here although we using a rectangular method but the b here that we use is bf or beff not bw Okay, so you have to be careful here. Then same as what we have done before. So when the B, the K value is less than 0 0.167, therefore the conclusion is compression reinforcement is not required, then the section is a singly reinforced. So this is calculate the level arm. In this case, the level arm is 0 0.91D, which is less than 0 0.95D. Then you have to use Z 0.91D. Here. Is the AS required or area of the tension reinforcement required? As I said that, this is a singly reinforced, we only design the tension reinforcement, where the compression reinforcement, we only provide based on the minimum area required that we, going, we, that we have to calculate later. Okay, so in our case here, the area of attention required is 246.07 millimeter square and provide 402 millimeter square. Why I provide 2H16 is quite high compared to the AS required here. So it's almost 100 plus uh, millimeter square uh, extra compared to the AS required here. So it's okay for that because we are going to provide only two numbers of the reinforcement so that we can control the crack of the beam. So if we provide more than that, we will have two numbers uh, of spacing that's why uh, sometimes it can cause failure to the structure due to the crack and then we have to make sure this condition is uh, applied in order for us to make sure that the beam is not failed for every single check under ultimate and also serviceability limit state next we have to calculate as minimum so the as minimum here is 105.8 millimeter squared and it should uh, and it's more than 91.23 millimeter square, 0 0.013 BD. Therefore, the AS minimum 105.8. Therefore, we use this AS minimum to provide the hanger bar or the compression bar at the top, so which is 2H12. No need for us to design. We're using this AS minimum as provisional reinforcement area. Then AS maximum is 0 0.04 AC equal to 3. 150 millimeter square and then we made a conclusion here we have to make sure that as usual as minimum is less than as provided and as maximum then the design of the main reinforcement is okay next process we have to design shear reinforcement in my case here 
uh, the maximum shear force is 39.06 kN. As usual, we have to check the condition of VED is less or more than VRDC or VMIN. So the resistant shear force here is equal to 37.74 kN. The minimum here is 30.08 kN. Here is the process to calculate rho n and also k. So the conclusion here, VED is more than VRDC. Why I use VRDC? Because the value, uh, the VRDC value is bigger than V mean. That's why I compare uh, VED with VRDC. Then sure reinforcement it is, is required. After we get this conclusion, so we have to calculate the VRD max in order for us to compare again with VED. Either it is less or more than VRD max by using this theta 22 degree. So in my case here, I got the answer VED is less than VRD max. Therefore, we have to design the shielding by using this formula ASW over S equal to VED over 0.78 FYK decotagen theta. Then I got the answer here 0.101. Then we refer the dimension table ASW over S ratio, and then we get H8 300 center to center, which is the uh, required or the provided uh, link reinforcement. Okay, next is the deflection check. So, the deflection check here. So, the first process we have to compare between rho and also rho naught. In my case here, rho less than rho naught. In my previous example, rho more than rho naught. In this case, because of the rho less than rho naught, the equation that we have to use in order for us to calculate L over the basic is using equation 7.16a uh, shows in the appendix. Then I got the answer L over the basic is 31.48. Then we calculate the L over the allowable is equal to L over the basic time modification factor of the reinforcement time with the modification factor of the span. So the modification factor of the reinforcement is equal to AS provided over AS required. So the answer here, L over the allowable is 67.18. Then we calculate the L over the actual. L is the length of the beam, which is 4,000 over the D, which is 401. We get the answer, 9.98. Then we compare and make a conclusion here, justification. L over the actual is less than L over the allowable. Then, therefore, the deflection check is passed. Okay. Last but not least, we have to calculate the cracking check under serviceability limit state design. So I assume the WK here 0.3 millimeter. And then here, the steel stress, I using this formula, FYK time GK plus 0.3 QK over 1.15 times 1.35 GK plus 1.5 QK. So we add the value GK that we get here okay, from the beam and also the slab. Then here is the total GK. And then the answer for the steel stress is 274 MPA. And then we calculate the maximum spacing of the bar. So here is the maximum spacing of the bar. So here is the spacing of the bar. In my case here, okay, uh, the S actual okay, is equal to 65 with one spacing here. So if you have more numbers of the reinforcement, so you will have more spacing, depend on how you arrange your reinforcement. So we make a conclusion, S minimum should be less than S actual, should be less than S maximum, then the crack check pass. Here is the detailing, same as what we have done before. Here is your link, here is your main reinforcement or tension reinforcement. Here is the hanger bar using the minimum area required. And then here is the cross sectional. Here is the longitudinal uh, section. I hope that you understand how to design flange beam uh, simply supported. So if you have any question, you may come and see me and you may WhatsApp me or you may ask any question throughout my channel. So I hope that you understand. See you again. Thank you.